questions that they want us to ask you were uh, questions related to registry review. Um, and I know you have a lot of, uh, you know. Well, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things I wound up doing a lot of was registry review for, for whatever. I mean, it's just, right. it's just one of those things. You know, I never never saw myself doing this kind of stuff. I mean, it was, you know, we can talk about that later, how it got there. It was just it's oh, kind right. of odd different so one of the things i would recommend for people for register review okay uh, one of the things i'd recommend you not do is necessarily a self-study oh, the right. problem with uh, registry re reviewing for the registry is a lot of people study too much mm -hmm. they study too deep they feel like they have to understand MR physics, right. and you do not have to understand <laughs> MR physics. You have to remember terminology and definition, right. right? Memorization. Memorization. There's basic things that you have to memorize, right? right? Not understand. <laughs> And I tell every, every class, I usually start out with this kind of a little spiel, okay? The ART, there, I learned in a, in a class that I got sent to some years ago, uh, things about multiple choice te or tests. And, and there are different formats for multiple choice tests and stuff, okay? The, I've never written questions for the ART. I've never participated in anything like that. I have mm -hmm. no, nothing. I've never been on a committee. Nothing. Okay? No affiliation. No, no affiliation <laughs> at all. Um but they subscribe to a format where you have a question which is called a stem in a multiple choice format and then you have the the four choices three are called distractors the other is mm -hmm. of course the the correct answer it can only be one the format to which they prefer is that the stem or the question be about two to th one one to three sentences at most right, right there. and if you think back to the they're not elaborate questions okay then the answers distractor and the answers mm -hmm. all should be the approximately the same length you don't want like three short ones and one long one right mm -hmm. you can't have two answers that would be mutually exclusive for example the answer answer a raise the tr answer b lower the tr and then uh. you got number of averages and receiver band you know two others don't matter because then you look at that and you go oh well, what's you know it's probably one of those two right right i mean which it would likely have to be um maybe but they don't like stuff like that they also tend to not some questions could be perceived as this but they tend to avoid them and in fact in general in multiple choice tests negative questions are avoid or tend to be avoided because that's a that's a odd oddity. You you tend to answer a, to a positive, not a negative. Which of the following is not right? Okay, those typically are not preferred. Okay, so my whole point is this: aside from now that it's on a computer, click on the aorta, click on the you know triangular fiber cartilage or whatever. Right. Uh, click on the image that's out of phase or something like that. It's a multiple choice test. In a multiple choice test. It's all about definitions. Mm. You can't ask how something works. How does oversampling oh, work? You true. can't ask that in a multiple choice format. Right. You, the you one, turn it on. You turn it on, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, you know, another example, then I give, always give this one. Um, so this is kind of like what you'd see on the registry. For a tissue with a given uh, T1 relaxation time and for a given TR period, the flip angle that will result in maximum signal is known as the blank, right. which is the Ernst angle. You don't have to know how to calculate it. You don't have to understand it. You just got to remember the definition of an Ernst angle, right? <laughs> right. Right? You, you've got right. to know, you know what it looks like when it's in phase, what it looks like when it's out of phase, understand the concept of chemical shift. You don't have to you just have to memorize this stuff so what i tell people is take a look at the content specifications uh, okay right you know what most people don't do is look at the content specifications what are the content specifications they're telling you what's on the test <laughs> it's very straightforward i mean it's telling you what's on it the test. it actually tells you the number of questions for each category right right, right. now right. The, the categories are getting big and i will tell you this if you're prepping for the registry, do not under don't understudy or look over 
patient care. Oh, that's okay. where they get you. People spend all their time on the physics. And right. there, there used to, I think, be only 61 questions. When I, How many questions total are there on the physics? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, it's like 105 for what they call image production, which is also not the term I would use. It's really data acquisition, right? Oh, it's, right. right. That's really what it is. Right. Uh, it's done by Fourier transform, and that's all you need to know. Right. right? But then you got the other 95 that you can completely miss. Right. Oh, right. You know, the other thing that the other thing that's often overlooked is the anatomy. Right. Right. And and I'll tell you, when I took the registry, the anatomy is what kicked my butt because I'm think, looking at this. I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't, know. <laughs> right. I don't know what that is. Right. Um, and so there's the anatomy lives in what's in the procedure category. See, they're not. They don't ask you how do you do a knee, how do you do a head. Like we, you know, procedures oh, right. can be like uh, things about procedures could be like dynamic pituitaries or arterial phase. You know, in the liver. Oh, right. You know, plain. Plain. It depends on the radiologist of the day. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. So they can't really get just general specifics about how to do this stuff. Right. But that's where anatomy lives. The if you look at the content specs, when it gets when you get to, uh, I'm just, just kind of scrolling up here. If you get to uh, where it says procedures, okay, uh, and it goes neurological spine, whatever, and you look at focus of the questions, the first thing it says is anatomy and physiology. And they can ask you about imaging planes. Well, like what plane would best demonstrate this? I mean, right. like a pathological consideration, protocol considerations, patient considerations. See, this is the procedure thing. Right. And it can't get real specific because this, is, this has to go across the board. This is why if people study too deep. Uh, that, let's say that you study spectroscopy and you take so much time with it. I think people should look at this from the perspective of... This applies to all of you know, North America, everyone that takes it. Mm -hmm. So if you take someone in a very small, if I hit that one more time, I'm going to be, <laughs> it's a third a time. Um, someone that's in a very, very small town, you know, they have very little exposure to spectroscopy, then, you know, you don't need to go that deep into it. Right. People are like, well, I don't understand this. And they spend so much time when their focus should be in other areas. Right. You, if, right. Most it's going to be a one very question. high level yeah. question. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's got to be very high level. Uh, you know, and the answer is probably going to be chemical shift. I mean, I mean, just seriously, right. you know, there's not that much you can ask about. Right. right? Don't give it away. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I would read the content specs. And the patient care and management is important because it's increased in the number of questions. And the reason it's increased in the number of questions, or at least my opinion of why, is now the ART allows uh, people who have other credentials to sit for the MR registry and CT. And specifically, these are almost universally nuclear medicine techs. In other words, they're CNMT right. accredited credential. So the ART now allows these people to sit for CT or MR as their primary through the ART. Okay. Right. Okay, but they have to be like an RDMS or CNMT. Mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because you have PET CT and PET MR. Right. Right. So nuclear techs can get in, into this. The other thing is that there are uh, several schools uh, throughout the country that offer a two-year associate program in MRI, just like you went to, just like we went to X-ray school and came out with an RTR and radiography was our primary, mm -hmm. and MR is post-primary. So uh, th these schools, all they do is you take a, you take an uh, X-ray program, take out X-ray physics, put in MR physics, <laughs> and you got a two-year JCERT accredited right. program mm -hmm. where then these people can sit for MR as their primary. So since they've got, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. as to why you, you're seeing an M increase in the patient care you think well i went through this on my x-ray registry why am i having to do it again well because they have people who have never gone through a ARRT primary oh, test that makes sense you see what i'm saying yeah. so now they want to make sure that they have that proper background background yeah. yes understand uh so again that's one of the things i recommend people do if it isn't if it's if it's not in the content specs it's not on the test right so when you're self-studying be careful what you're studying <laughs> Thank you.